Okay, so we're like locked in the middle of this like beautiful theater, right? And we're surrounded by all these people wearing their fanciest clothes. Then she started like puking up black stuff and foam, realized that if we all rush out of the theater, there wouldn't be any way to get the people that needed to help her into the theater. So they all kept us seated in our spots. And then <laughs> the EMTs came in. I think I would fake my death to get out of a play. <laughs> Welcome to One Night Stand-Up Comedy. Tell us your sexy stories. I'm Alfie Roselli. And I'm Rebecca Roshan. This is the show where you DM us your wildest, scariest, funniest... <laughs> sexy stories. And DM us on Instagram at One Night Stand-Up Comedy for your chance to be featured on the show. And please, please, for the love of God, do not send us any dick pics. Unless you write your story on it. Then, props for creativity. In that case, it better be a long story if you want me to look at it. <laughs> yes, of the day is the ravenous Randy Meyer, a wrestler, and I'm so excited for it because it involves a wrestler going to a play, and right before it ends, someone almost dies for real. I think I would fake my death to get out of a play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear from him now. Randy. All right. Welcome, ravenous Randy Myers, Woo! a wrestler That's me. That's me. comedian from Vancouver. We love wrestlers in this house. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just watched the Bret Hart doc. We thought it was amazing. Best, best, there, is, best there was, best, best there ever will be. And Pink and black, black, baby. Pink and black attack, baby. <laughs> they love him. We loved your story. Like, we love your story because you talk about <laughs> how, like, you went on a date, watched The Exorcist, and, like, kind of didn't put you in the mood. You're kind of grossed out. So, like, the next date, all right, we're going to go to play. We're going to do it right. We're going to go for a nice dinner. We're going to go see a show. And then we're going to go back. And then we're going to make some love. But then you go to the show. Tell us what happened after that. Okay, so we're like locked in the middle of this like beautiful theater, right? And we're surrounded by all these people wearing their fanciest clothes. And the lady, like you said, in front of us started like convulsing and like gyrating in a way that was similar <laughs> to The Exorcist. Um, and started like, then she started like puking up black stuff and foam. And at this point, the the people on the stage, the actors were like, maybe uh, we should, you know, put this show on hold for a second. So they put it on hold and they realized that if we all rush out of the theater, there wouldn't be any way to get the people that needed to help her into the theater. So they all kept us seated in our spots. And then <laughs> the EMTs came in with the, like, with the stretcher, checked her out, and then like just took her out on the stretcher. They didn't, she wasn't moving. They didn't put like a sheet over her head but uh, i don't i don't want to think i don't know i don't know what happened you don't know what happened to her oh yeah, no I, uh, so what what did they do with the the show like what what happened we were paused for a second and then the actors had the duty of going up on stage which is like oh i've been embarrassed enough times on stage but this would be the worst and then ask do you want us to continue with the show after <laughs> you might have seen a death? And we're like, the audience like resoundingly said, nah. And so we all just piled <laughs> out of there. <laughs> like, yeah. Alfie was saying how like a play would be one of the his least favorite dates to go on. He's like, I would do I would fake my own death to get out of a play. <laughs> and so in this case, do you think everyone in the audience is like, this is our ticket out? Yeah. No, thank yeah. you. For sure. I think she thought that was, yeah, totally her ticket out. She's yeah. like, you know what? I saw the bright light coming. And I thought I might as well. This play's going to be what another forty-five minutes. I don't got that in me. <laughs> so, what was more entertaining, the play or the almost death? <laughs> the play was no. The death was more entertaining than the play for sure. What was for the play sure? About? I don't remember what happened in the play. <laughs> he doesn't even yeah, remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a play. It's, I thought it'd be really funny if like one of the actors like just took it too seriously and just like stood by the exit door. I was like, no. The show must go on. Do you know how hard we've worked for this? My mother's in the audience. This is opening night. Is, I'm gonna. I still have a soliloquy left. I want my standing ovation. I want my flowers. I want my bow. I can picture them even standing at the exit way and just doing their soliloquy as people yeah. are leaving too. They're gonna see this. Just spinning you... it in. <laughs> yeah, just spinning it as a thing, and everyone. I can't in. take it anymore, Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah did you uh so can you explain to us a little bit about the date like who you took on the date the person i met through through wrestling i was actually they had like kind of 
I never get people to slide in my DMs. That's never, ever happened before. And then this happened after a wrestling show. And I guess oh, I looked cool. oily or something that night. What kind the right of match way. did you have that night? It was a tag match. And it was a horrible match. Um, and it was a fundraiser for, I believe it was the like Black Rhinos to like give money to the like endangered Black Rhinos. Yeah. And that week, this specific breed of Black Rhinos had their last two had been poached on Tuesday. <laughs> But somehow Wait, this so it was a fundraiser for an animal that already was extinct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like two days. Like two Never days. Oh, my two days. You guys are two days too late. Two days too late. <laughs> Raise awareness for the fact that it is extinct. Yeah. <laughs> in memoriam. <laughs> you fought in memoriam. What was the DM slide like? Was it like my condolences about the rhinos? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more about my abs at the moment, actually. Ooh, oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This so, is pre-COVID, I guess. Well, yeah, because you yeah. probably had you you had to work that whole match. You were probably exhausted. You had like two people that didn't know what they were doing, so you probably had to sell like crazy. Totally, I did, and it was also in front of a, this weird like upper echelon charity like yeah. audience you know what i mean like it was also an art gallery show so i don't think anyone <laughs> even knew what wrestling was yeah. <laughs> she slips into my dms right up after this failed trying to save the rhinos there's just so much death in this story is yeah. what i'm trying yeah. to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so are you with this girl anymore or person no, we didn't. Uh, we didn't actually end up staying together after we didn't. Yeah, it just kind of felt like one catastrophe after another in that yeah. case, and just the spark never really returned after seeing somebody die. You know, yeah. it's kind of one of those things. You either bond you together or it kind of separates you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the pettiest reason why you've broken up with somebody? Or I can be quite petty. Like I am. I am. Yeah, we all are. That's why it's a good good thing to know because it's like you never know because it's like. Sometimes when someone stops seeing you, it's like, oh, man, was I really that big of a fool? It's like, no, you just had, like, spinach in your teeth. And, like, sometimes that just rubs people the wrong way. It's, totally. It's like the luck of the draw. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I didn't like the height of your shorts. They were too yeah, low. Yeah, but for me, I would say it was, like, probably somebody who was really – they were really into the Fast and the Furious movies. Oh, and they yeah. were trying to sell mm. me on the Fast and the Furious movies. And <laughs> I just – I couldn't handle it. And they were like – I'm like, they given – their money on multiple occasions to the same movie. Like they'd go see it in the theater, but then they'd also get like the Blu-ray copy or the digital copy. And I'm just like the wow. amount of money that was being given that was not going to the culture, that was going to something to yeah. ruin our culture. You know, <laughs> I was just well, yeah, I, the thing is, save your money, buy a car. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Having it be one of the first things they mentioned. And then yep. I blew it off, you know, like, and then later on, I go to their place and I see the collection, like prominent. You know what I mean? Like yeah, a proud, prominent. like collection, like, like next to the, like, they're not like hiding this. Yeah, like exactly. Covering a custom light, just like. It, exactly. Totally. Yeah. Just that reason. I just couldn't handle it. It was like making my mind melt, just like trying to listen <laughs> to the stories about like placing like. Shakespearean references using like a Ferrari or something like that. I'm like, Ferrari I don't get it. Vin wow. Diesel. <laughs> yeah, people that like, are, the problem is they normally look too good at the gym a lot of the right. time. Oh, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's dancing. how they trick you. That's the oh, yeah. bait. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> oh yeah. All brawn and no brain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And did you, did you mention that you were pansexual? Yes, indeed. So yeah. like so I say, I, I can be like quite petty, dating? but yeah, like, that I'm not petty like? about that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. You have a lot of options there. Was it? Totally, I can blow off a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> twice as many people to not date. Yeah. <laughs> you have to open it up because you're too petty. Is that what you're saying? Is that where it stems from? Pretty much. Issue? Yeah, that's pretty true. Yeah, yeah. I have a very high standard, so I had to open it up. <laughs> that's you, good. I like that. You read my book. Like that. Read my One book. wrong movie reference, and you're out of the yeah. game. Exactly. Because <laughs> I read a story about Mariah Carey, and like whenever she goes shopping, like she's not uh, an extra small anymore. Right. But when she goes shopping, like she'll pick things out and then her assistant will go on the back and change like the M to XS or like get someone else to do like it. Sew so it in. Just wow. sew it or in. They, and sometimes they have to buy two of the dress so that they, she can put the real tag in. Like it can't yeah. be just like a generic tag. Yeah. If she gets a Belmont, 
Oh my gosh. gosh. That's what happens when you have more hits than the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, like, right? like, I don't know. Yeah, no, not when too you successful. Roll, when you like roll enough. Christmas, yeah. what are the benefits of dating a wrestler? What's your like, finishing move? <laughs> 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 I, I like. I think that like consent is a big part of it. You know what I mean? I think ideally, like wrestling is we all, like is what it is, right? I'm not gonna take a power bomb from somebody unless we talk about it, and I said it's okay for them to do things to my body. That, yeah. you know so like really checking in with each other and like that's a like i say a big part of wrestling if my back's hurt i'm not yeah. gonna i'm gonna tell my opponent that and then we're gonna work around that you know what that's actually right. a very good point because it's like you have that physical intuition where it's like you know when you're in a rhythm you know um peaks and valleys like you know playing to the crowd is like playing to like your opponent as well and love making where it's just like you need peaks and valleys you need like to know what's working in the actual act yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in the actual act but then in general i feel like you'd be good with like communicating or coming up with plans and yeah. things like that yeah exactly and you're a liar <laughs> what? No, it yeah, exactly, hey, right? hey, hey, it's yeah. it's real it's real it's what are real. you doing it's all real, <laughs> it's real. <laughs> you got to wrestle a heart yeah, actually, I'm from Calgary originally. So yeah. um, oh, that's I awesome. trained in the, the dungeon. You trained in the dungeon? <laughs> yeah, I did. That's yeah. so cool. What was <laughs> the dungeon okay. like? Can you describe the dungeon? I always wanted to know from someone that went um, to the dungeon. Stinky is my first. Like, uh, it like smelled like because was the house had so many cats, right? And yeah. they were what? allowed to go everywhere. Wow. So like one of my jobs was to come in early and to like make sure the mat was clean of any sort of cat leftovers. Yeah. So um, there was that, but it was like it just it, – it like – it was so, I don't know, it had this air about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just when you walked in, you could feel that, like, had this legacy and history and all this stuff. Um, like, there was still stains on the mat from, like, Brian Pillman or Owen or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. whatever, yeah. Right? Like, it made me, like, as cheesy as it is to say, it changed me, like, as a, like, maybe a kid to an adult, you know? Yeah. Well, did, did, he, stre- did he get stretched out? Uh, Stu was, uh, he was, like, in his 80s by that point. So yeah. all I got was, like, a really mean handshake. But he's like, point in my hand. So I'm like, so, ah, that, that counts enough. You know what yeah. I mean? It's still yeah, probably yeah, the yeah. hardest handshake you've ever gotten. Oh, for sure. His hand was like two and a half. I don't even get it. Yeah. That's so oh, cool. that's so cool. So, yeah, and that what... was very fortunate to be able to like, just because I was from Calgary and yeah. I was like lucky enough to work with cool. them. So I've got to, yeah, I wrestled. I wrestled uh, Davey, uh, Davey Boy Smith Jr. I've wrestled uh, Natalia. I've wrestled Tyson Kidd. Um, yeah, so I've been that's fortunate so cool. enough to like, Take bumps from all of them. Who's uh who's the better worker? Uh, Tyson's the best yeah. worker, yeah, I've ever seen. Yeah, that's for so sure. Cool. Like that's hands cool. down, like always what around. Like he was a, like like basically my trainer too. Like I worked with Ross and Bruce Hart, but then uh, Tyson like kind of basically took me under his wing and we would like work out every day and stuff like that and like show me like the ropes as it were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so, so cool. cool. Oh, that's awesome, Eddie. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, cool. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. <laughs>